Hi there, I'm Luke. Welcome back to Photobyte and today we are testing out the Removu K1. Let's get into it. Removu K1 is a three axis gimbal that allows filmmakers to get steady shots in awkward areas and it's just a great little tool to have in the bag. We've been testing this out for a while and we're here to give you the review of what we think about it and what we think maybe could be improved in the next one. So, let's carry on. So, after playing with it for a while, it's quite easy to see how responsive this gimbal is. And what's quite nice, you can do like a torch effect as well. So you can do this, and then you can almost use it like a torch. You can probably tell, we will probably switch over to when you can see it, but the stabilization on it is insane. And what you can also do is, this is the joystick. So you can spin it around, and there's Jack the cameraman, and then there's me. Now this is a 17mm lens, so it is very wide. The kind of people I'd see using this are probably action filmmakers or people who are into action sports because the idea is you can point this in just one direction and you're going to be able to get the shot no matter whereabouts they are in the frame. And the fact that it shoots 4K is also a bonus because it means you can zoom in and get even tighter shots. So in terms of cost, you're looking around about 420 pounds. Uh, in terms of video spec, you're looking at 4K at 30 frames a second, 2K at 50p, which is really nice to see, and then uh, 1080p, you can go all the way up to 120. So this does pack quite a punch. And in terms of the video clarity, I'd probably put it up next to, say, a GoPro Hero 5, in terms of how clean it is, probably also the size of the sensor as well. They're quite similar. Um, sadly, there isn't a one inch, inch sensor in here, which would be nice to see, but maybe we'll see it in a K2 or the K1 Mark II, wh whatever they look to call it. Um, but in terms of what you get as a package, I'm quite impressed by this. And what you can also do, if I just turn it off quickly, there's these little buttons on the side you push and you can take out the battery. Now, what you can also do with the batteries, you can push the button and just like um, some of the DJI products, it actually has a light indicator to let you know how much battery is in it. So that's a nice feature to see. And also the fact that you can actually take the battery out in the first place is a great tool and a great idea. And I'm really thankful they did that. Uh, in terms of the screen, it is only an inch and a half, but in shooting in this kind of light and the sun is out today and I'm wearing sunglasses, I can still see the screen. So even though it's small, it is quite clear. Um, there is a bit of a gloss because of the cover they've got on it, but even still, you can see everything. The basic features on the outside here, we have our on and off uh, switch here. We've got our joystick, which we can move to control. Uh, you have the record button, also the OK button when you go into the menu, your photo button. Now it does shoot 12 megapixel stills. The, the, the stills are quite good, but if I'm honest with you, I don't see many people using this um, for stills. However, in saying that, there is a time lapse feature, so we'll check that out later. Um, there is also a micro SD card slot. I currently got in a 64 gig uh, inside there. Now this does have a microphone input, but we'll get to that in just a second because there's something we need to talk to you about. So in terms of the camera, this thing does actually have a 17 mil lens, which means it's very, very wide. And when we triple tap this trigger here, you can also do selfie mode. And when you're doing selfie mode, it is really easy to use for vlogging. Uh, there is one little feature as well that I thought would be quite cool. So I'll just stop the recording now and I'll get my bag open because you can get a combo pack. So because of the microphone input, you can get um, Removu's own kind of omnidirectional mic to help cut out wind. But I don't have that, but I do have something else. I have the Rode Video Mic Ro. The Rode Video Micro, shall we say. And that just screws into the bottom like that. And then it's because of its stringiness, or because of the um, cord up cable, keeps it nice, keeps the form factor small. And now we have a vlogging setup. So with this being on here, we're gonna need crystal audio. Also got here to cut out the wind, so we've got the muff on the top. And now, when I hit record, it should sound even better than it was when we were just shooting it directly through the Removu. And what I did have to get was this uh, cold shoe, but you can pick one up on eBay for like 
four quid and this is about 50 pounds on Amazon but as a vlogging setup I think people will be quite impressed with this and the fact that it shoots 4k your recording time is up to four hours long which is insane and you can take the batteries out and put something in I think there's a lot going for this camera for b-roll it's great you've got the slow-mo I it's I'm surprised no one's doing it yet I'm surprised no one's actually going around vlogging like this because it's wide you can get nice and close the focusing distance is a comfortable 50 centimeters so you haven't got to kind of hold it at a certain length you can just kind of comfortably hold it and you're going to get the shot that you're after and it's going to be nicely in focus as well and when you're trying to show off the background you really don't have to move out of the way you can just literally do that and you can see everywhere around you i mean even with this camera pointed towards me we're still getting jack's shoulder in involved if i tilt it towards him now we're both here and we're probably what about three four feet apart and see, can't even touch him and he's in the frame, which is, it's so nice. One of the things I also like about this is the fact that it's 4K, so you can bring it in closer to you. So you've got to always have this wide angle. You can crop in four times. So you can go with more like a 35 mil, maybe a 50 mil uh, look out of this camera. Uh, the one thing you won't get though is that background blur. Uh, even though the aperture is 2.8, it's just the fact that because it's so wide, it's very, very hard to get a narrow depth of field on a wide angle lens. So that is one thing to bear in mind. That is one of the, I guess you could say as a downside, but I don't personally see it as a downside because when you're filming uh, a vlog, you don't want to be trying to find the focus like lots of vloggers have been doing because they've been getting cameras with a very narrow depth of field. And in many cases, it's kind of missed just slightly. So maybe their ear will be in focus and their eyes will be out of, fo out of focus and it's becoming more and more of a thing. But as a vlogger, you kind of just accept that and move on. But with something like this, it's small, it's lightweight, and it's stabilized. Like 420 quid, stabilized, HD 120. You really can't complain about this camera. It really is nice. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out today. We're on the beach. We're going to do some B-roll. We're going to show you what this thing is capable of. And then you can decide whether or not it's the sort of thing that you want. But um. I think you'll be impressed. One thing I wish this thing did come with was a tripod. Like, not, not like a big one, but like a small little one because as much as it can stand, when it's in this kind of setup, it, you can't really put it on a tripod. Um, that's just one little issue you might come across, but then again, this is a handheld rig, so it's designed to be held in the hand. Otherwise, just go with a normal camera. So just to give you an idea, we're currently walking and I'm just showing you how it handles with highlights, shadows. This is a good time to check that out. But also as I'm walking, we're just seeing how the gimbal handles because we're currently on rough terrain, which is quite tricky to walk through. So it's this kind of stuff here. So that'll just give you an idea. I'm also really liking the triple tap trigger to do a selfie, because then I can just uh, walk around, point you in the direction like that. So, oh, look at that. There's some amazing things going on over there. Have a look, and I can still see the screen and frame up. And I can just tap again, and then it will just turn around and it's back on me again. Yeah, I'm impressed. I think I keep saying I'm impressed, but I am. One thing we did notice was you couldn't really change the front of the lens to maybe put on an ND filter or a circular polarizer. That would have been a nice addition, especially for filmmakers shooting in very bright conditions. Uh, but then again, you do have manual control over the um, camera itself, so you can tweak things. But having a circular polarizer and an ND filter just kind of helps with the natural motion blur and video, and also just getting you a nicer color um, to help you in post when you go to edit the video. It almost feels like I'm just like casually looking down at the screen and just leading it along. It almost looks like a drone shot. That's how smooth I think it's going to be. Yeah, that's cool. So we were quite impressed by this feature, not because we haven't seen it before, but 
we thought it was quite ingenious. And that is the fact that you can do time lapse with this gimbal, but using the app, the Removu K1 app, you can have it at a pinpoint of an A and then have it go over to B. So for example, we're by the sea, so we can have a time lapse of the sea coming in and then slowly move it up towards the downs. And I just think that's pretty cool. In fact, I think it's a great idea. Another thing, a lot of vloggers like to use uh, time lapses in order to kind of lead the storyline on to moving through the day and going through um, their time or their stay somewhere. Time lapses are a great way to move the story along. And the fact that you're able to get it in this piece of kit means you don't have to need another camera in order to do that. So, I mean, a lot of vloggers do use their iPhone, but this will give you more clarity and also a better resolution when you're doing the edit. And one of the easiest things to do when you're making a video is to preferably use the same camera for everything because it means less color grading and it doesn't randomly change to um, different kinds of angles with different kind of colors. So a Canon camera has a different kind of color science to it, to a Nikon, Nikon to Sony, Sony to Fuji, you get the idea. Every single camera is doing something different. So to show you the potential of this camera, I'm now gonna give it to cameraman Jack. Another thing that we liked as well is the way that you can connect it quite easily to the app. And the features of the app are quite good as well. We like the idea that you can actually control the way the gimbal moves with the app. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna hit record now from the phone and then you can just have a record. When you are in anything like 1080p, uh, you will see that you can't actually can control it. But if you just tap on the screen, you can actually move the gimbal around so you can see it's moving. Now we're gonna move it that way. And you can move it up, and you can move it down, like so. One thing we do wish that they added was the fact that you can control it on an X, Y axis at the same time. In other words, you can go to the corners because this only works, you can go down, then you can go across. You can't just kind of go at an angle. So you can't dart off away like that. You can only go that way and then that way. So I wish they would change that because that would definitely help with improving the quality of the app. Um, one other thing I liked about it as well is, the well, like I said, the, the time-lapse feature. You can also access the manual controls on here so you can control the exposure, aperture, ISO. You can do the pro features if you want to. We found you don't really need to. Uh, this is quite good at metering the light, but if you, if you prefer video a bit darker or a bit lighter, then you have the option to control it. So there's no need to worry about that. Uh, you can also view playback on the phone as well. So essentially anything you can do on the um, gimbal, you can now do on your phone. You can also use it on a tablet as well, so it makes the preview screen a bit bigger. And it means you can attach this onto things um, where you can't get access to them and then just control it via the app. So that's another convenient thing to have. Uh, you can also get the mic up as well, so you can see if the mic's on. You also get battery indicator on the app as well. You don't always get that with some apps. You've got to double check the battery on the camera before you get the app open. The actual build quality of this um, gimbal is really nice. We like the fact that there's a, like an actual grip to the handle itself. We like the fact that when you grab things, your fingers aren't pushing buttons and your index finger naturally rests on the trigger. So when you go to do your um, gimbal switch, so one, two, three, and it'll then pan around. Currently, I've got it off at the moment. Uh, we do like that feature. We also like the fact that there is a mic attachment, which is really nice to see. Uh, it's one of those things that lacks in many um, small form cameras. Uh, so you've got to rely on the audio quality coming from the camera and sometimes you have to buy the little muff that looks a bit like this and then kind of stick it onto the camera which kind of re reduces resale value. 
We like the fact that there's a tripod thread at the bottom so you can attach things like a cold shoe to use the mic or we could get the extra pack to get um, from over his own little microphone. In terms of folding up away, it does come in its own little bag. So all you gotta do to turn it off is do that. There's a little switch at the front, you just pop that up and then you can just twist it in and then just slide it into the bag. So the form factor is really slim. If I take this off, you'll just see how small it is. And that's it there. And it's not even that heavy. It's probably about 350 grams. So you're not lugging around the weight. For a filmmaker, this is a great tool to have in your bag. It's a great thing to use. Again, the people that I see using it are probably like action um, filmmakers, or vloggers, uh, people wanting to get into vlogging. This is a great investment. I can see a lot of people getting a lot of use out of it. The fact that you can remove the batteries and then put new ones in is another great thing because it means that you can get a full day's use out of the camera. I haven't heard about any overheating issues with the sensor. Uh, the 4K is quite clean as well. The natural color science that they built into it you know, it works. Uh, it's not going to be for everyone, but for just general people going out and filming, it's great. For more higher end filmmakers, uh, there isn't an, a, a log um, option, so you can't thoroughly grade it. So that may be a drawback for you. But for someone who's just going out and just filming and just wants to get the shot that's going to be clean and stable, you're going to be very, very impressed with this. So that's our review on the Removu K1. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. We want to see those numbers going up. And in the meantime, I'm Luke, this is Fadabai, and we'll see you next time.